folks, it's The Red, and welcome to another update video to share some current and upcoming projects for the channel. And I'll be playing a bit of Pyong Pyong in the background because I always enjoy a good puzzle game from time to time, even if it's one of the hardest to play. I mean, Puyo Puyo in general isn't too bad, but having to play with five colors is just... Ugh, no thanks. Still, I guess practice makes perfect. Anyway, before we get to the channel stuff, I wanted to formally announce the winners of the Mario Maker contest. It looks like the level had quite a bit of participation, with over 30 unique completions. But our fastest clear time, at 2 minutes and 27 seconds, was achieved by... Tornado Alley's 1! Congratulations, you've won the $20 eShop gift card! And, coming in second place, with a time of 2 minutes and 34 seconds, it's Polite Ethanol! You've won the $10 eShop gift card! Congratulations to the winners, and a special thanks to everyone who entered. I plan to do more contests in the future, but don't worry, I've learned a thing or two about designing a good speedrun challenge from this contest. So you won't have to worry about time-killing challenges like what you found in that mushroom room. I'll work on those ideas some more and reveal a new contest course sometime in the future, so stay tuned! Alright, so, on to the channel stuff. As you may have noticed, I've been doing a lot of Mario Maker stuff on the channel lately, partly due to post-launch hype. This is a game I was very much looking forward to, after all, so it stands to reason why I would want to play that more. Also, close to its release was CTR Nitro Fueled, a game which has been asking for my participation Nearly every day since launch due to its special events and low-paying coin system with tons of unlockables to obtain. It's been something of a draining task, to say the least. Don't get me wrong, the game's been great, but ugh. Why do they have to make it so tedious to unlock everything? Well, besides that, I've also got a number of other games I've been wanting to pick up, including the Zelda Link's Awakening remake, the Spiral Reignited Trilogy, Shantae and the Seven Sirens, which we'll probably get a playthrough sometime after launch. Uh, there's also Pokémon Sword and Shield, and Luigi's Mansion 3. Yeah, there's a lot that I'm looking forward to, and unfortunately it's made it quite difficult to set aside time to continue the Crash Bandicoot Huge Adventure No Damage run. I probably picked a bad time to start that playthrough, honestly, because of these games I'm looking forward to, and what I and what I have planned for October, I'm probably gonna have to take a short break from that playthrough until my October plans are finished. But speaking of October, I'd like to go ahead and mention a plan that I've been having on the back burner for a little while now, ever since February, in fact. But this year, I'm planning to do a marathon of all the Luigi's Mansion games. I'll be doing playthroughs of Luigi's Mansion and its sequel, Dark Moon, throughout October, and this is all leading into a blind run of Luigi's Mansion 3 starting in November, as its launch will be at the end of the month. After that game is finished, I plan to get back to Crash. On the side, I'm gonna try and figure out how I'm gonna handle the flying levels in this game as well, because I'm probably gonna need more time to sort that out anyway. I thought we had peaked when we had to deal with the borderline unfair design of the flying levels in Wrath of Cortex, but the kinds of things you need to dodge in Huge Adventure may just wind up causing as much of a headache as those levels did. Practice runs haven't exactly been going swimmingly, but I'm not ready to throw in the towel yet. At the same time, though, I'm hardly ready to try and do the run for real, so bear with me. But yeah. While I'm working on that, we've got a full month of Luigi to look forward to, during which time I do still plan to update the Mario Maker Showcase, so feel free to send your requests for that as well. Also, while we are on the subject of October and Halloween themes, I thought I would also take this time to plug my good buddy Squeaky, who has his annual Oktoberfest series coming up on his channel. I'm not sure what all he has planned for this year, so I thought I'd let him tell you about it himself. Take it away, Squeaks! Thank you, Red, and Al for the forecast. Coming this October will be the return of our annual Oktoberfest event, which is a month-long season duck celebration of all things spooky. I will be frequently uploading videos all month long on games that share the Halloween spirit. No tricks here, only treats. Maybe a few tricks. But be warned, followers of the Red One. Our channel tends to host considerably more mature content than our friendly fox here. 
As much as we love to entertain you, we must warn you if you're young in age or afraid of heart, I'd urge you not to join us for the festivities as we do not wish to upset, offend, or disturb anybody. Back to you, Red! Alright, so you can go on over to his channel to check that out if it sounds interesting. So, beyond Luigi and Crash, I don't have too much else planned for the channel, but I'm sure there are plenty of other games I could tackle as well. I mean, with Shantae coming up soon, I'd say there's a good chance that that game will be the playthrough to follow Crash the Huge Adventure. So I hope you're looking forward to that as well. With that, I think that's about everything I wanted to cover. Again, I'm sorry about how long it's taking to get around to Crash. Like I said, lots of new games coming out, and there's that accursed flying level that I need to figure out how to get past. Seriously, why are the flying levels always the bane of my existence in these games? Ugh! Oh well, I knew what I was signing up for, and by golly, I'm going to get through this one way or another. But with that, I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up here. We'll just watch how this battle with Scorpion Man plays off, and then we'll go ahead and call it a day. He's pretty high up on the board, so I don't see him uh, surviving much longer beyond this. I mean, he looks pretty roasted at this point. No, he's still hanging in there. See, the thing is, after I've set off my initial chain, I have a hard time getting anything else set off afterwards. Again, five colors, and they're starting to fall pretty fast, so this gets pretty difficult at this point. But this should about finish him off. Yep, there we go. Alright, so thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.